3.9 derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions, part 2. Your objective for this lesson is still to find and apply derivatives of exponential and logarithmic functions. Okay, so in part 1 we looked at the derivative of the natural logarithm ln x, but here um, we're going to look at the derivative of log. So not the natural logarithm, just log. And this says to find the derivative of log base a of x for an arbitrary base of a greater than zero and a is not equal to one, you're going to use the change of base formula. So this is something from back in algebra two. Remember that log base a of x is equal to ln x divided by ln a. So your base goes on the bottom of the change of base formula, base on the bottom. Okay, and you can see from this, let's cover this up a bit, there's a lot of stuff. Uh, the derivative of log base ax then, you could just substitute in your change of base formula since these two things are equivalent. So this is equal to ddx of ln x divided by ln a. And we already know the derivative of the natural logarithm. So we have 1 over ln a times ddx ln x here, which brings us to 1 over ln a times 1 over x. And the reason why that we didn't use the um, quotient rule up here is remember a is a constant, x is our variable. So this is like your coefficient times the derivative of ln x. Um, okay, and so we have finally 1 over x times ln a. So a is a constant. But this is our derivative that we were looking for. Okay, and here it is written very nicely for you. ddx of log base a of u is equal to 1 over u times ln a times du dx. Okay. Example 4. Find dy dx if y equals log base a of a to the sine x. Okay, so there are two ways to do this problem. We're going to do it the longer way first. I know. You, uh, you love me for that, but <laughs> let's just start with the long way first in case you don't remember all of your properties of logarithms. So we know that ddx of log base a of u equals 1 over u times ln a du dx. Okay. And this whole big thing is my u. So we are going to use a bit of chain rule here. You see that there is a lot of stuff there. So ddx of this log base a of a to the sine x equals Maybe I move this over. Okay. One divided by u is a to the sine x times ln a. So what's my base? A times the derivative of u. So a to the sine x. Okay. So this part in front is going to stay the same. And we have the derivative of a to the sine x. You remember from part one that the derivative of some constant to a power is itself, so a to the sine x 
times its natural logarithm. So ln of a to the sine x. And of course, <laughs> since that wasn't just one thing in there, I still have my sine x. I need to use chain rule again. So I now have d dx of sine x. Okay. And I'm going to throw these both over 1 so that they don't get lost. And I want to multiply the fraction that I have so I can condense a little bit. I just see 1's top and bottom, so that's not really difficult to do. Okay, so I have a to the sine x times ln of a to the sine x over a to the sine x times ln a. Okay, so now I need to find the derivative of a to the sine x. So let me rewrite this first part first. Okay, and you should remember from part one that the derivative of um, a constant to a power, so derivative of a to the u is equal to a to the u times ln a du dx. Okay, so right here I have an a and for a that's very nice. My sine x is my u. Um, so let's work this out. So times we have a to the sine x, that's my a to the u, times ln a times the derivative of u, so d dx sine x. Okay, and before I go any further, I want to throw these over a 1, and I want to multiply and simplify, because there's a lot of stuff going on here. So 1 times anything is itself, so I have still a to the sine x, ln a, and oh looky here, I have the same thing, top and bottom, thank goodness this was looking a little bit too much. Um, and the derivative of sine x is just cosine x. So these cancel and I am left with cosine x. So the derivative of this whole big thing is sine x. Now, looking back at this, you might see that what happened was we just ended up finding the derivative of that exponent there, the sine x, which was cosine x. Um, which means that this logarithm part just went away. The reason for that, and this would be the shortcut way, when you have a logarithm and the base matches this number here, that just cancels out. So this is like when you have ln of e and they cancel, because really this is log base e of e. Okay, so whenever these two numbers match, those pieces cancel and you're left with the exponent. So really all we had to do here was find the derivative of sine x and that would have saved us a lot of work. So knowing your properties of logarithms can save you quite a bit of work. Okay, The power rule for arbitrary real powers. If u is a positive differentiable function of x and n is any real number, then u to the n is a differentiable function of x and d dx of u to the n equals n times u to the n minus 1 du dx. You've used this rule before. Um, so this should look familiar. Okay, so example five, uh, part A. Find 
dy dx if y equals x to the square root of 2 power. Okay, so you know I'm just going to take this guy and push him into the front. So I have dy dx equals the square root of 2 times x. And what's my new power going to be? Square root of 2 minus 1. Okay. Of course, here I technically have d dx of x, but that goes away because it is just a 1. So I am left with square root of 2 x to the square root of 2 minus 1. This is my answer. Okay. Part B, find dy dx if y equals 2 plus sine 3x to the pi. Okay, this is a little bit more complicated. Um, you do have a chain rule here, so this is like a u to the pi. So first I'm going to find the derivative of the outside function, which will be pi 2 plus, eh, not 3 sine, sine 3x to the pi minus 1 times the derivative of the inside function, so 2 plus sine 3x. Okay. From here, I know this part's going to stay the same. So pi times 2 plus sine 3x to the pi minus 1 times derivative of 2 is 0 plus the derivative of sine is cosine 3x and you should notice that this is a 3x in here so I'm going to say times the derivative of 3x okay. so again this part will stay the same and then I have times cosine 3x, because that's 0 in a way, times 3. So the derivative of 3x is 3. Okay. And now I just want to rewrite this so it looks a little bit nicer. I want to get all my constants up in front. So 3 pi times 2 plus sine 3x to the pi minus 1 times cosine of 3x. This is my answer. Example 6. If f of x equals ln of x minus 3, find f prime of x. State the domain of f prime. Okay, so I'm going to start with this the derivative of ln u equals 1 over u du dx. Okay, so this is u. Um, so using this, my derivative f prime of x is going to be 1 over x minus 3 times the derivative of x minus 3. And the derivative of x minus 3 is, well, that goes away. The coefficient of my x is just a 1, so this is a 1. And I know that 1 times 1 over x minus 3 is just 1 over x minus 3. So this is my derivative. Um, of course, x cannot be equal to 3, since that would put me in quite a predicament with the denominator being equal to 0. 
Okay. Um, now we need to determine the domain of the inverse, not the inverse, of the derivative here. And at first glance you might say, oh, well x just can't be equal to 3. But if we look at our original function here, this guy, our domain is between 3 and infinity because you can't take the logarithm of a negative number. So you have to be between 3 and infinity. This means that you're not going to be finding the derivative of any point less than 3. Okay, so you can't find the slope of a point when there is no point, which tells us then that the, the domain of, of our derivative of f prime is between 3 and infinity. Okay, so this is the second part of our answer. Example 7. Find dy dx for y equals x to the x, where x is greater than 0. Okay. The first thing that I want to do here is kind of rewrite this function. So y equals x to the x is a little bit difficult to work with. What I'm going to do is ln both sides. So I am taking the natural logarithm of both sides. And this allows me to take my exponent and really just not have an exponent anymore. So ln y equals x times ln x. Okay. Now of course I don't have y by itself anymore so I'm going to have to uh, use implicit differentiation here. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So d dy of ln y equals, and here I have product rule. So this is u and v. Remember my product rule is uv prime plus v u prime. Okay, so I have x times the derivative d dx of ln x plus ln x d dx of x. Okay. Now the derivative of the natural logarithm is 1 over whatever is here, so y in this case, times dy dx. Okay. And this is equal to x times, we just said, derivative of the natural logarithm is 1 over this number, so 1 over x, plus we have ln x and this derivative of x is just a 1, so times 1, don't really need that. I have 1 over y times dy dx equals, and I see here I'm going to have an x over x. That just cancels out, but it doesn't go away. It gives me a 1 plus ln x. The last thing to do here, remember I want to get the derivative by itself, so I want to get dy dx by itself. I'm going to multiply both sides by y here. I'm going to multiply instead of divide because I have a 1 over y, and I know multiplying by y over 1 will get rid of that. So dy dx 
equals y times 1 plus ln x. There is one more thing that I want to do here. Um, I don't really want to have this y over here, but fortunately, I know that y equals x to the x, so I can just substitute that back in. So dy dx equals x to the x, not ln, 1 plus ln x. Okay, so this gives me my derivative um, with just x's in it. And that is my answer. And that is all I have for you for 3.9.